Well, hello, everybody. It's a uh, pleasure to see you again. Uh, this week, I was thinking that we would take a look at the, uh, the names of Jesus because, believe it or not, there are many, many titles that Jesus is given, and many of them really and truly go way back even before Jesus was born, and hence the reason for what we would call the Old Testament. So what I'd like to begin with this morning is talking about how we got the name of Jesus himself. Now, to come to that, we have to first go to the prophet Malachi. And the prophet Malachi wrote his book in the year 55 BC. That's the last of the Old Testament books. So sometimes when we read the letter of Malachi and then turn the page, we think that we've just flipped from one book to the next book. But that's really not the case. Because you see, Malachi was really not his name. We're not familiar with the name. But the name translated into English means my messenger. And so we don't know who wrote the book. But what we do know is that God had commissioned the book to be written. And as a result of that, in the very last book of the Old Testament, you're going to hear Malachi say that God is going to be silent. And from the next 400 and 75 years, give or take 20, 30, you're going to hear nothing, 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 nothing. And that's really amazing. And the reason that it's amazing is because we have not heard anything about Jesus. So the Old Testament was written at a time when the only Jewish religion was that of the ancient Hebrews. And God had said to them, you will be my people, I will be your God. You will be my people, I will be your God. And I give you this commission. And the commission is to go into the nations and to proclaim the one true God. Now, why was that? It was because there were many people at the time who believed that the sun was a god, that the moon was a god, stars were gods. There were gods everywhere. And God is saying to the people of Israel, no, I want you to go and reveal me to all of them. And I will give you the words which you are to say. So we go way back to the very first beginning of the Old Testament, right up to the book of Malachi. And when Malachi finishes his book, silence. Once he finishes his book, silence. When he finishes writing his book, silence. 450 some years. Now just think about that for a minute. Our nation <clears throat> was founded at a time when things were in an uproar. Kind of the same condition that we're in today. And as a result of that, our leaders decided, you know, once and for all, we will take a stand, and once and for all, we will acclaim ourselves to be the name above every other name, the name the United States of America. So we're going to begin with Malachi, and over the next few days, we're going to be talking about some names like Jesus, Christ, Emmanuel, the Word, and it's going to be in these names that we're going to learn more about Jesus than you could ever imagine. And the final word, of course, I'm going to leave as a surprise for you at the end of our conversation. 
So what are we going to do today? Today what we're going to do is we're going to go to the name of Jesus and try to understand why the name was given. Now, the thing to remember simply is this, that in the time of Jesus, it was the great privilege of the parents, Mary and Joseph, to name the child to be born. And in those days, they didn't have what we have today where we can look at blood tests and look at other tests, etc., to determine the gender of the child to be born. So they were in waiting to, until the last uh, moment. And an angel appeared to Mary and said to Mary, your child, you shall give the name Jesus, because the name Jesus means the God above all other gods. Now, Mary was taken by that. And the reason she was taken by that was because nobody in her family was named Jesus. Nobody in Joseph's family was named Jesus. So out of the clear blue, this name is born. And it's a name that means something very, very special. If you go back to the book of the prophet Joshua, you'll hear how it was came to be. Because Joshua means Jesus translated into the Greek or vice versa. And what we mean by that simply is that once you get to the point of Joshua, then you begin to understand that it was Joshua who led the people out of slavery. Moses led them from Egypt. But when they got to the other side of the Jordan River, the other side of the promised land, Moses took them to the top of the mountain and he said, look, do you see where you're looking at? Look down below you. The whole of the people of Israel shall inherit this land. And I will not be the one who will bring you forth from the land of Egypt into the promised land. But my right-hand man, Joshua, will be the one who will lead the people from where we are into the promised land. So now, just think about that for a second. Moses commissions Joshua to lead the people out of slavery into the promised land. And that's why the name Jesus was given to him, because he was the one to whom all the people would come to realize as they realized in Moses and then realized in Joshua that it was Joshua who led the people from slavery into the promised land. And the word Joshua means, I will lead my people. So we have already the beginning of the name of Jesus. And the next time we get together, we're gonna to talk a little bit more about the name of Jesus and why it's such an important and precious name. So with that in mind, we're gonna pause here. I'm gonna give you a blessing like we do all the time. And we're gonna ask God in this new week to watch over you and bless you and keep you in his peace. And we pray that blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.